Welcome back to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your amazing support. There is uh, a lot of confusion and anxiety in the country following the impeachment of the deputy president, Rigedi Gashagwa, by the National Assembly members when 281 voted to take him home. There was one abstinence and 44, of course, were the naysayers. Following the completion of that process at the National Assembly, all eyes now turn to the senators. And Kenyans are piling a lot of pressure on our senators to give the deputy president a fair hearing because they feel that Rigeti Gashago was never accorded a fair hearing at the National Assembly. They feel that even though the deputy president went there with you know, what he, he, found, he thought were a lot of evidence implicating the president, playing videos of the president, even, you know, calling out on the former NIS boss, criticizing the former, the former IGU police, the decision was already made. Because immediately he finished speaking, the minority leader spoke and he said, Rigadi must go. Then the majority leader did the same. It was a decided moment. There was nothing Rigadi was going to present to change their mind. So many Kenyans feel that it is the Senate that will accord the that will accord the deputy president together with his lawyers at least to place his case. Many are asking why couldn't the deputy president resign, having known that the National Assembly was going to impeach him. That was so obvious the writings were on the wall. But instead, the deputy president laughed off the slightest imagination that he could resign, yet he was elected by over 7 million people. We go to Bunga tomorrow. I'll be there at 5 for two hours, and I'll put my case. In the unfortunate event, it proceeds to the Senate. I'll be there again to prove my innocence by way of evidence. When I called this press conference, there was a lot of speculation that Regard Gashagwa wants to resign. <laughs> the answer to that question is very simple. Even the deputy himself believes that he's going to be accorded a fair hearing at the Senate and he so believes and, ex uh, and, and uh, has a lot of expectations that he's going to be exonerated at the Senate level. Why do Kenyans feel that senators will, uh, we will exonerate the deputy president? One, there are people who feel that if the, pre the, if the deputy president has to go home, they have to go with the president. They were elected under one ticket and there is nothing new that the deputy president is doing that the president can be excused of. Whether it is tribalism or shareholding, it is worst at the president's office with disappointments and all these things. They also feel that the president had promised, having claimed that he suffered a lot of humiliation from his former boss, the Uru president, and the junior officers who were around Uru, he promised that he would not subject or he would not allow his deputy to be subjected to humiliation from junior officers. Yet we see all this happening. It is on record that there are junior officers who even insult the deputy president, even through SMSs. So many Kenyans feel that the process that went through the National Assembly was shambolic and they want to see what the senators will do. Even those who used to support William Ruto are now saying that the, our, our National Assembly is a house of disorder, a theater of absurd. And they agree with the Kenyans that on this, they're not going to support William Samuel Ruto. <laughs> <laughs> when when, when uh, my good friend, and I'm using the word friend rather loosely, yeah. I've never met the <laughs> deputy president at all, uh, says that it is a theater of the absurd. Mm. It is a theater of the absurd. If you look at the conduct of the members, they were not conducting themselves with due decorum. And I am suggesting that what Barack is saying has merit only in an environment where truth is given pride of place. But these were individuals who were, had taken a position 
and there is a beautiful Kiswahili saying anaye kutusi hakuchaguli tusi mm. whatever comes to the mouth that is what they spew out they are taken a decision and whatever truth that the deputy president was bringing forth to them in their mind it was useless it was an exercise in futility my hope as i've already indicated is that when he appears before senate the senators who have had the opportunity of going through this process when they are dealing with governors i hope they listen to him a lot more keenly i hope that he will they will listen to him and understand some of the thing that he's saying so that they are given their due weight but i suspect i'm hoping against hope mm. all on hope yeah really care much but, but jeff the president is on record assuming that uh, the internet doesn't lie mm. and that the records Both which are in your archives yes. mm. saying is that when i assume the office of the president i will never allow my deputy to be subjected to the humiliation that i was subjected to but i now know in kenyan politics memories are short and selective i call Now supposing that uh, you get elected mm. um, in August and somewhere down the road two years three years you have a problem with your deputy um bwana rigathi gashagwa for whatever reason and you disagree completely almost in the same manner that has happened right now uh, whichever direction it, it it comes from what are you going to do <laughs> I want to tell you uh, Joe that uh, what you have said will never happen it will not happen it doesn't just I, depend I on want, you sir i want i want i want to tell you that um i will not allow for example my running mate or my deputy president to be humiliated by junior staff i would not want uh, a situation where clear responsibility in fact i have i have said it as much and i have said I have committed Deputy President Gedi Gashagwa only needs 17 senators who will stand by his side to survive this impeachment motion. Can he get the 17? A yes and no question. If the senators will listen to him very soberly without playing tribal politics, without looking or or, or obeying the orders from their tribal chief and party chiefs like ODM not listening to Raila Odinga Um, UDA wing that supports Ruto decides to be independent and they don't listen to 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 Ruto those who are uh, following Kalonzo decides to ignore Kalonzo whatever he says and they listen carefully to the submissions regarding Shagwa will get the 17 senators but if they listen to their tribal and political ch- uh, k- kings and chiefs then i can assure you that Rigathi might just be fallen again he must he might fall at the senate and head to the to the to the courts in this video i want to give you reasons why i believe that the senate is the best place where rigathi gashagwa is going to get justice kindly subscribe to our channel if you are watching us for the first time don't forget to click the notification bell you can give us many likes on this video and help us share them if you can again thank you very much ladies and gentlemen senate is the place where there is this thing called cross examination i always like it you see at the national assembly it was may the eyes of it and the vote and all that and uh, they, it was a shouting match it was like they, they describe it a theater of absurd a shouting match those who wanted to support rigathi gashagwa were never accorded any 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 fair hearing they were shouting them there was this shouting match of rigathi disrespects women rigathi i don't know took some property from the widow or the, the former the, the wife to his brother late brother it was a choreographed thing and so at the senate level there is going to be cross examination where the witnesses i understand that felix kosgay uh, who is the cabinet of the secretary is going to be there head of public service i mean i understand that nairobi governor johnson sakaja is going to form part and parcel of the witnesses and these people are going to meet the battery of lawyers that have been lined up by rigathi gashagwa led by senior counsel paul mwite you know who ndegwa is and the way 
he has uh, cross examined people that is where they have to prove without shouting matches you have to prove all your case with evidence before it is approved and i want you to look at this snippet of what has been happening when when witnesses are being cross examined uh, that is cultivated out of the former former impeachment motions that have been there before you are a kim's qualified procurement officer yes I you am. have your current practice certificate i can confirm i don't have good yes. how many tenders took place in the year 2017-2018 these are um uh, my default time um uh, time um uh, this it's okay I'm, I'm okay with the answer i want you to open the contract that you gave first page of the contract not the last page ungoyo ingine aha contract agreement between county government of kirinyaga and velocity what's the spelling of that velocity c2i at the end good open the next page kaliras good read out the recital on the other hand velocity velocity what is the spelling of that velocity velocity with c i t y at the end aha uh -huh. did you consult the cc health during these processes yes consult are you aware that she was there where you are seated yesterday and she confirmed in evidence and in or on oath that she was never involved which velocity has executed this agreement to the best of my knowledge with CTY aha uh -huh. who is the chair of that tender committee okay. don't go further can you look at entry number 4 it is indicated velocity with an i aha uh -huh. let's move on karilas I understand that if there is something that scares Ruto and scares Kimani Chungwa and Moses Wetangula and Mituse is the imagination that they are going to face these lawyers so that you don't feed on imagination you have to give people practice practical what happened the burden of proof lies with them because they have even leveled leveled criminal charges against the deputy president they have to prove beyond reasonable doubt that indeed he is culpable and people fear that examine cross examination and that is what we want to see of course it comes after the senators shall have had both sides and they have to be convinced this being the first attempt to impeach a deputy president i have always said that the bar must be set so high not so high to protect thieves not so high to protect tribal chiefs not so high to protect murderers or, or those who are culpable of wrongdoing no so high to ensure that we don't allow every tom dick and harry to take a motion of impeachment to parliament just because some two people have, have disagreed now number two, the senate has got experience of impeachment motions they have done it when i think governor kawira mwangaza have been there thrice the deputy governor of kisi has been there and so this is something that they they, they are privy to they have they've got this experience they have seen the way it is being done and so we expect that with that experience they are going to do it uh the way it is envisaged in our constitution and we expect that rigidi gashagwa might just get off the hook if they listen to him Number three, there is this urge to show Kenyans that they are independent, to show Kenyans that they are they they, they don't follow the dictates of their bosses. You see, in, in, at, at the National Assembly, that was Ruto and Raila speaking. If you listened to people like Otindia Molo, Milio Diabo, to me, I could be wrong. that was those are the vo those were the voices of Raila Odinga if you listen to people like Kimani Chungwa those were the voices of William Ruto so Raila and Ruto actually crucified Rigathi Gashagwa and i'm not in, in, implying in any way that Rigathi Gashagwa is an angel i've maintained on this platform that Rigathi practiced politics of of imperialism and politics of tribalism when he was talking about shareholding but who doesn't practice shareholding so the senate want to prove independence and autonomy and that they are not listening to some they are not taking orders people believe that senators are sober if you listen to people like boni alwale people like 
the Kisi Senator Richard Onyonka, if you listen to Edwin Sifuna, you will realize that they are people who are exercising sobriety. Why do we do this? We have seen them when they disagree with the party positions on Adani. They want to stand with the Kenyans. They want to do their God-given role. And people believe that it is in that Senate where Rigethi Gashagwa is going to get a fair hearing. And we are not saying that he must be exonerated. They are going to look at the evidence. They are going to look at the charges labeled against Rigethi Gashagwa. Do the charges meet the bare minimal threshold as, had been, as, as has been set in our constitution? That is what we are looking at. If they are convinced beyond reason of doubt that all the charges merit expulsion and impeachment of a deputy president, and they understand fully that they, that they are standing on, at, at a very precarious moment in the history of Kenya, where whatever they do will be used as a case study. The subsequent senators will be there, and we want to make sure that if we have to oster a public officer, it has to be on merit, it has to be merited by the Constitution. And so, ladies and gentlemen, all eyes at the Senate.